Thank you very much, Steve. Um, it's great to be here in Middlesbrough. It's great to see that UKIP have finally made it to the Premier League of Politics, and what better place to show that than Middlesbrough. I'm here because we've got a referendum to win on June the 23rd, and we're seeing all of this scaremongering from the other side. We're seeing that it's going to lead to World War III, that it's going to lead to uh, a cutting GDP so severe that it's worse than World War I or World War II. These are the kinds of things that they're trying to tell us. I don't think anybody in their right minds is going to believe a word of what we're being told by the Remain side in this campaign. And you've only got to look recently at the report from PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, for example, where they talk about how desperately bad the economy is going to be if we vote to remain. Naturally, you look and they say, well, by 2030, uh, in their worst case scenario uh, for Brexit, that the economy is only going to grow by 36% as opposed to 41% if we remain. And these are the people who are desperately trying to tell us that this Armageddon is coming. It's nonsense. I saw it on the BBC website the other day, where they started talking about house prices. Have you seen the headline? House prices, we're going to see thousands and thousands of pounds wiped off the value of a home if we vote to leave the European Union. Have we seen that one? I looked at the actual article on the website and I looked at the figures on it. They're saying that if we leave the European Union, house prices will rise by 8%. If we remain, they're saying that house prices will rise by 9%. And this is what leads to a scaremongery headline that thousands of pounds are going to be wiped off the value of your new house. Now, I mean, there's an argument, don't get me wrong, for saying that it's actually for first time buyers, for people who want to get into that market, for people who've never had the chance to own their own home before, that actually if it did mean that, that money would be wiped off your new house, it wouldn't be such a bad thing anyway. But this is the kind of deal thing we're dealing with, with Project Fear. It's everything that could possibly happen. They will explain how it leads to World War III within 20 minutes. Because obviously if the European Union has 27 countries in as opposed to 28, it's so unstable that you then see World War III take place. It's nonsense. And you have to ask yourself, why are they coming up with this nonsense? And very simple ways, really, isn't it? They don't want to be based on the facts, do they? So, we've got a referendum to win. But, you know, one of the big problems that we have in this referendum campaign is that they constantly say to us, well, what will Brexit actually look like? And sometimes we can make a, a, a little bit of a mistake, I think, the way that we go about things. Sometimes we can effectively, um, we can be selling the razor, not the shave. Um, this is all going back to, to Gillette, who invented the first disposable razor. And um, he was so infused by this new disposable razor that he, that he invented that he went around telling everyone how wonderful it was to have a disposable razor. And he didn't sell very many razors. And then in his second year of operation, he learned from that, and he started telling people how much better the shave was with the new disposable razor. And suddenly, people flocked to buy it. Because they want to buy the product, they want to know what it's going to do for them. And actually, I think that's the one thing that we need to do a little bit more of. We need to sell the shave, not the razor, with Brexit. We need to talk about how life in this country will be better in the event that we vote to leave. We need to talk, yes, I mean, immigration is an important issue. We do need to talk about it, but we also need to talk about it in a positive way, about how things will be better in the future if we vote to leave. We need to make it clear we're not against all immigration ever for any reason, but actually there's something deeply wrong. When you've got control from 27 countries, uh, try again, 
when you've got no control from 27 other countries where people can walk in, no questions left, just show a passport, but you've got, you've got control from the other 167 countries. And it leads to this mishmash, this nonsense system, where you get areas where you get unskilled labour absolutely flooding the market, leading to all sorts of problems like wages dropping, people being unable to find unemployment. Uh, you, uh, you find huge, huge amounts of unemployment in so many areas. So, if we leave the European Union, you know, why not? Let's quote Lord Rose from the In campaign. He had to admit to the Treasury Select Committee, didn't he? If we leave the European Union, wages will go up. But, according to Lord Rose, that's not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> I wonder how many of us here actually agree with Lord Rose that it's not a good thing if your wages go up. And doesn't it just show how out of touch they really are? Doesn't it show that actually there is a difference between the career political establishment in this country and those of us who believe in our freedom, in our independence, in our democracy, and in our sovereignty. So, I'd like to talk a little bit about how life will be better out, outside the European Union. With the world's fifth largest economy, we're voting for out. Straight talking, simple answer. Thank you. We're the world's fifth largest economy. We're told that we can't survive outside. And yet, 167 countries in the world manage to survive outside just fine. <coughs> We're bigger than 163 of them. No one's telling New Zealand it's so small that it has to become a part of Australia and accept Australian laws. No one's telling Japan it's got to become a part of China. But again, just pointing out the failings of the EU isn't enough to win a referendum. So let's start. We're going to get a great trade deal. It's nonsense to suggest anything otherwise. Why? Well, Norway, Switzerland, Iceland, Liechtenstein, those countries are generally more prosperous per capita than we are outside the European Union. But we're four times the size of all those four economies put together. So why do they not believe that the world's fifth largest economy would have more clout than all those small countries? They may be doing well for themselves for their size, but we've got a lot more clout than they have. Would we not, in that event of Brexit, actually start to work together with those countries? Would we not actually start to say, you know what, we will work together with those countries that aren't part of the European Union and make sure that we've all got a good deal? Would we not actually look at the EU treaties? Article 50, Article 8 of the Lisbon Treaty, they both tell us very clearly that the EU wants to trade with us in a spirit of neighbourliness and cooperation. Fine, we'll take them up on that. And do you know what? Do you know what I hear Labour saying to me? Is that if we leave, these people are going to punish us. They're not going to give us a trade deal, they don't want to sell us their cars anymore, they don't want to, they don't want the jobs that depend on trade with the UK, because let's face it, Britain's their best customer. They don't want those jobs from selling to us to continue. They'd much rather punish us. They'd kick themselves in the teeth so they can punish us for leaving that European Union. That's what Labour seems to think. Hang on a second. And they've never answered this one, because every time they say that in debate, I say, if the European Union are, as you say, these horrible people 
who would desperately stop at nothing to hurt their own people if it meant that they could destroy us. These are the people that you want to be in a political union with. It's amazing how quiet they go then. Oh no what? Every single time. Of course we're going to get a great deal with net importers from the European Union. Labour tell us that the North East are great exporters. That we export more than we import. Yeah? Fantastic. So the North East will get the benefit of the trade deal that the whole of the UK gets then, won't they? We'll get the best of the banking worlds in the North East. They go quiet again when you mention that. Will Straw, Britain's strong in Europe. The Treasury Select Committee does a good job, doesn't it? Because when uh, all of these Europhiles come before the Treasury Select Committee, they have to tell the truth. They have to actually admit, and Will Straw admitted, yes, we'll get a better deal than countries like Norway. Absolutely. Make our case for us, thank you. So we're going to get a great trade deal. Better than Norway, better than Switzerland, better than Iceland, better than Liechtenstein. Probably put together. We're going to get our fisheries back. Yay! You know, it's places like, you know, all across the, all up the East Coast. We see towns where the fishing industry has been ravaged by the European Union. Wouldn't it be nice to have those jobs? I'm not going to steal my speech then. <laughs> what about doing something about VAT? What about all the companies that are losing their business right here, right now, because we're members of the European Union? You know, I know one firm, for example, in Hartlepool that I've visited, and they can't afford to trade with the rest of the EU anymore because of the new EU VAT rules, where if you sell something in the UK, you sell British VAT, and you put British VAT on it. Now if you sell something to Sweden, instead of charging our VAT, you now have to charge Swedish VAT at 25%. If you charge, sell to Hungary, you've got to sell to Hungary with Hungarian VAT at 27%. Well, there's a company that's making mobile phone apps that they're selling for about pound fifty. The software to automatically build differently in every different country country and make sure that they're checking that people aren't actually from the country that they say they are, the software to do that takes them longer to develop the apps that they're actually selling. They sell far enough, we're not going to trade with the EU then. We're going to sell to Australia, to America. And guess what? That's exactly what they're doing. So once we're in the EU, they can't afford to trade with the EU. Wouldn't it be good for our trade if we get rid of some of these regulations that are costing us jobs here and now, and actually if we could develop our economy once more? Wouldn't it be nice if we could actually do something about our steel industry? Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if we had the power when China dumped steel on our markets? Wouldn't it be nice to have the power to do something about it? America, they saw it was coming. They stuck a 266% tariff on Chinese steel. Done. No problem. No more problems with dumping. We want to do something about it. We have to negotiate with 27 other countries to see if they'll all agree to what we want them to do. Wouldn't it be nice to have our independence and be able to do something to save our own industry, to help our own manufacturing? Wouldn't it be nice to have our vote back at the World Trade Organization? Wouldn't it be nice if we could actually help some of the world's poorest countries. Think about that for a moment, because the EU is a protectionist customs union. Its tariffs are, you know, tariffs on imported cocoa, 1%. Tariff on imported chocolate, 30%. What happens, the poorest countries can't turn cocoa into chocolate in those countries. So guess what? It gets done somewhere else. They can't develop their economy, they can't develop their trade, they have problems. I've met so many companies um, where jobs are going and deregul deregulation is desperately needed. I look at um, the biosites uh, directive that's just coming in, where companies now have to retest products that they've tested to UK standards and used for 30 years. But now the EU will be retested. Put it for 50 grand a pop. Every product they want to make, They've got to have tested for 150 grand. 
So guess what? Some of those going off the market, guess what? Job losses. Right here, right now, because we're in the European Union. And all of this before we even start to spend the independence dividend, the money we get back that we're handing over to the European Union. See, I think that Britain is a more positive Britain. I think that's a Britain that I want to that I want us to be. I want us to be that great Britain. But whilst we're in the European Union, we simply can't be. So let's be positive. Let's talk about the future of our country. Let's talk about the Britain that we could be if only we weren't shackled to this European Union club. <laughs> you know, ladies and gentlemen, we've got less than five weeks to a referendum. The choice is so, so clear. Do we want to be part of an insular, inward looking, little 1950s, little European club? Or do we believe that we are good enough as the world's fifth largest economy? Do we believe that we are good enough to be a major player in a global 21st century vibrant economy? Thank you.